Huanangi H12D HD motherboard comes with outdated BIOS. In my case, I have got the BIOS version 1.3 and you have to update the BIOS to receive all the features. Uh, the latest BIOS at the time of recording is BIOS version 1.8. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to update BIOS on Huanangi H12D HD motherboard. First of all, you need to go to the official Huanangji website, link will be in the video description, go to downloads and download the latest BIOS from their website. The website might be way too slow or might be unavailable in certain regions, so for that sake I'm also going to duplicate this BIOS to my Microsoft OneDrive, if that works for you better. Once the BIOS is downloaded, it will be a zip archive. You need to right-click on it, select properties and then unblock the archive. Once the archive is unblocked, you can extract it to a folder. Inside the folder you will get another folder with some Chinese characters in the name, but basically you need the content of the folder, not the folder itself. Once you have the BIOS, you need to prepare a bootable USB drive. The easiest way to do that is through the application called Rufus. You can download it from the official website, Link will be in the video description as well. I recommend using portable Rufus and the latest version available right now is 4.7. Now it's time to plug your USB drive into your computer, just be ready that all the data on the drive will be completely gone. Any drive that has enough capacity, like 1GB or more, will be fine, but just make sure that the drive is working properly, because the corrupted BIOS file is the last thing you want. With the drive plugged in, start Rufus application, select the drive in the device drop-down and it shall be selected by default if you have just one USB drive connected. To create a bootable USB flash drive, we need to expand some advanced properties because by default Rufus does not have that option in the boot selection drop-down. Expand advanced format options and advanced drive properties menus and then in the boot selection drop-down, we have quite a few extra options. You need UEFI colon NTFS. Leave everything else with the default values, and if you want to compare your values with mine, then just put the video on pause and compare each value one by one. Once you're ready, click start and confirm the action. Wait for the completion, and then your USB flash drive is ready to be a bootable USB flash drive. Close Rufus and open your USB flash drive in File Explorer side by side to the folder where you have your Huanangi H12D HD BIOS. Select everything from the folder with the BIOS, including the BIOS files and the EFI folder, and copy it onto the USB flash drive. With the BIOS version I have, on the USB flash drive you should have the following files Outerun ICO, Outerun Inf, Startup, NSH. EFI folder, AFU EFI x64.EFI, and then the BIOS file itself, which is EPIC ATX 32MB or 18M16.bin. Make sure to safely extract the USB drive from Windows, because if you don't do that and just plug the drive out of USB port, it might be that Windows is still writing something on the USB flash drive, and the data that you have got on the drive might be not complete, so the BIOS flash will fail. Power off your Huanaji motherboard and disconnect each and every SSD and HDD drive. Plug the USB flash drive and boot from the USB flash drive. Booting from the USB flash drive, the system will automatically go into the EFI shell. In the EFI shell, it will attempt to automatically start the BIOS update script. This BIOS update script is designed to be able to automatically figure out what is the number of your USB flash drive if you have some extra storage connected. It can be FS0, FS1, whatever, whatever. In my case, I strongly recommend you to disconnect all the storage devices from your Huanangji motherboard and if you followed my advice, you would have only FS0. So the detection mechanism is not really needed. Still, as with many other Chinese products, we have a bug in this script and the script doesn't work to update the BIOS automatically. It's not much you can do about it without manually modifying the script, but instead of modifying the script, I will just copy-paste the BIOS update command itself and execute it outside of the script. In your EFI command prompt, write type space dot slash startup dot NSH. 
This will output the content of the file to your screen, so you will be able to see what's actually in the file. In this script, we have a loop which is going to try to identify the location of the BIOS file, but what we need, we need the actual BIOS update command. And that one is uh, afu efi x64, then file name, and then some extra parameters for flushing the BIOS file. So with manual input of the command, it's going to look something like this. afu efi x64.efi space dot slash epic atx underscore 32 mb underscore r18 underscore ma16 dot bin. After the bias file name, we need to copy the flushing parameters, which are space backslash p, space backslash b, space backslash n, and space backslash k. These extra parameters are very important, and different BIOS revisions might require different parameters depending on what you need to update. So make sure that you copy them exactly as in the BIOS flashing script. Once your command is complete and you are ready to flash the BIOS, click Enter and patiently wait until the BIOS flashing procedure goes to the completion. If the flushing procedure went well, you will see the last message saying process completed and every item in the list will be marked as pass and done. Now you need to reboot your computer and instead of clicking the reset button, I recommend writing on the keyboard reset and pressing enter, because if you don't have access to the keyboard and cannot type yet, it means that the BIOS flushing procedure is still undergoing or something is totally wrong. Depending on what motherboard you have, it may take 30 seconds or several minutes to reboot into the new BIOS. In case of Huanangi H12D8D, it takes up to 3 minutes to get into the BIOS. So just sit patiently and let the motherboard reboot and reinitialize memory and get into the new version of the BIOS. Once you're in the new version of the BIOS, make sure to restore defaults and save changes and then reboot again. After that, you can power off your computer and plug back all your hard drives and SSDs.